Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to the very first test firing of the Angron's new cannon, and apparently the very loud engines which are required to make that cannon work. So, let's have a quick look-see. Oh my lord, the crawl has been completely gutted. Now this is the original converted crawl, the original AI crawl, which is still using the single blocks, which I really need to get around to replacing. So destroying it wasn't all that harmful, but there we are, the power of the new particle cannon. Now this is not done yet. Now I normally say that, I admit I say it far too much, but it's not done in the sense of this is not a battle-worthy vehicle yet. I've made the cannon. As we can see inside, look, tubes and everything, but the inside is an absolute mess, the engines are terrible and will overheat, I've just basically rammed them in there and put batteries everywhere, but I am pretty happy with how the weapon itself fires, let's see if we can fire again. Yep, that is going to be really good, and it's accurate up to around about 2,500 meters, so... I think we're going to make the Steel Empire very, very scared now, and that is on impact mode. I could have it on pierce mode so it goes all the way through, but in this mode it simply destroys huge chunks wherever it hits, which I think is just more visually appealing and honestly a lot more fun. The Steel Striders are moving up to take back one of their tiles, and so this will be a fantastic opportunity to test out the Particle Cannon variation of the Angron. So I'm going to very quickly mess around with the detection systems, do a little bit of clean up on the inside, and then send it forwards. I'm also going to quickly make a new crawl because we do need some fuel production. To counter the enemy's movements, we are sending in our elite team of two Krulls, one Shriven, one Angron, and a single Cultist as a meat shield. So, Shriven as far back as possible, the Angron can go over here, the Cultist very, very close, and then the Krulls can go all the way back here, nice and safe, since they're only there for their rocket bombardment and to actually fuel our two laser-based vehicles, because the Particle Cannon is in the laser section. And again, Against us we have the Hexer, a Hadron, uh, another Hadron, a Brush Cutter, and a XF-30 Gannet. Okay then, let's see how we do, and I'm actually going to go ahead and get on board... Actually no, I'll stay on board the Angron, because I do have some small benefits of my level which have been put into making engines more efficient on the vehicle I'm currently sitting on. So for now we'll do that. Begin. Straight away, the laser has hit the enemy flyer, which is good news for us. Hopefully it will cause it to simply crash into the floor. The hexes are there at the front, the two hadrons are at the back. Oh, I thought there were two hexes. I got completely mixed up there. And, of course, the brush cutter. So, we are mostly testing out how our Angron is going to do. How is the Partle Cannon going to do in an actual battle? So, since I haven't been in the sandbox mode for this, there's a good chance this is going to mess up. I've been messing around with the settings, and I think they're going to work, but this will be a learning experience. Begin. Okay, the Hadron shot doesn't seem to be as accurate as I first thought it was, and did very little. Was that because it hit the smoke? And the cultist is already dead. Ow. Laser is firing at the enemy's flyer and doing an okay job. Second shot from the Angron, this time doing devastating damage. Okay, so by the looks of things, it just isn't high enough damage. And that could be because we haven't got the overclock high enough, or it could be we're going too much on accuracy. I'm not sure how the Hadron is set up. I may want to try and capture one of these to see how they've set up theirs, because they definitely have a smaller weapon. So how are they doing so well? And actually, I can tell you right now, their shot is here, and as you can see, it goes inaccurate about here, which is really close. So they are putting more into the damage stat than the accuracy stat. And if all of this makes no sense, don't worry, I'll be looking at the weapon itself in a second, so all of these stats will make some sense. And there's the Krull's missiles, hopefully finishing off that brush cutter. Being hit by one of their Hadrons, and we have fired against their Hexa and did a little bit of damage. And then the laser's going in to do a lot of damage. So far, not overly impressed. Uh-oh. Missiles from the enemy Hadron! 
Two Hadron hits doing surprisingly little? What's with the Partal Cannons not doing anything today? It does take 10 seconds to load. Okay, that shot did cause an explosion, so at least that one did something. The other Hadron now being hit by the Shriven. So far, the Shriven just seems better. Oh, and our Hadron... Our Hadron? Our Angron. I'm going to be doing that so much now. Our Partal Cannon hitting somewhere. Maybe piercing would be better. The enemy definitely have it on piercing. I have been using impact, and perhaps impact just isn't as good as I first thought. And there's the Shriven, just doing a ridiculously good job. Yeah, that is not that good. There's a good chance, perhaps, one of the engines got damaged. I'll have to have a look at that later. Okay, everyone survived, I think. Is the cult still alive? Just about. Battle finished. Okay, let's have a quick look-see at the stats and see where we went wrong. Okay, I've been looking at it, and what I think I'm doing wrong is I've put far too much of my power into accuracy. I think we should be a little bit less accurate, but a little bit more medium-ranged. I was hoping that this would be a good long-range weapon, but honestly, why do we need that when we have the lasers and when we have the Krull? This is going to be a mid-range, exotic, fun vehicle. It's not going to be the ultimate long-range, especially when we can't build very big vehicles. I'm also going to shift over to piercing instead. I do love impact, I really really do, but I think piercing will be better for just outright destroying enemies. So this is our stats currently, the damage or inaccuracy. I'm going to change that from 20 and pump that up to perhaps 35. At at 0 0.5, rather not 35, 0 0.35, at 0 0.5 it's the perfect mix, or at least it's the standard mix, the nominal mix. I do want it to be a little bit more accurate, especially if we're going with piercing, perhaps a little bit less. Or perhaps we should go extreme. As you can see, the damage stats down here have already essentially doubled from this, the main laser here at 8216. Well, there's no main laser, but this laser at 8216 can go all the way to 16,432. The second one is we can definitely put in a little bit more overclock. We have far more energy than that in our reserves. So there we are. That's a little bit much, but I like the nice equal number here. So now we're on 18,000. And then there's this. This essentially is a very weird one, which people don't quite understand very well. And I'll be honest, you have to do a little bit of math in your head. It's all about how long range do you want your weapon? The more we go this way, the less damage we do, but the less damage is lost over a period of space, a period of distance. The more we go this way, the more is lost after one kilometer, after 1,000 meters, but the more damage we do. As we can see here, we can have ridiculously high numbers, but we do need it to be okay. I think I'll also put this in the middle. No, a little bit less than in the middle, somewhere like that. That's much higher damage. We've, like, quadrupled the damage numbers here. So, let's go back to impact. Just because we've changed all the others, and let's see how this does in the next fight. We could do the ultimate test and try to take out their mega vehicle over here, especially since the cultists have actually done quite a lot of damage. If we can win this now, it means the enemy will suddenly be spawning enemies a lot less frequently, which means we are a lot more safe to do some more experimentation and hopefully make the Angron into the vehicle it was supposed to be. Although there is a good chance I may end up ditching the Angron hull, because although I do love it, it's just not suited for anything think but a large regular turret and we don't really need that anymore so not sure what I'm going to do there also the engines definitely did burn out in that last fight so I need to redo those I've tried to push them for a lot of power but we have so much volume in our armor I didn't really have enough space for for many engines so I pushed them to a very very high amount which essentially burnt them out Okay, so their main vehicle is pretty damaged, as are the two defensive structures. So, if we can get the Angron over here, at a very clean shot at their main vehicle, and then we put the rest over here, just shooting at whatever they can see, we should be okay. Now, if I can remember, and if I can just spawn in for a second, let's have a look at how the terrain looks. 
So it's going to look like this. If we put anything over here, it will have to contest with the bumpy terrain, which we haven't really tested against, and especially with the Shriven, which has a very, very poor ground clearance. So I think the Shriven should really take part somewhere over here. The Krulls, it doesn't really matter where they are, since they shoot their missiles into the sky anyway. They can be all the way over here. It's absolutely no problem. The Shriven can go over here, nice and far back, and the Cultist, of course, just absolutely anywhere. Just go here as close as possible and try to be a distraction. Let's see if this works. Also, whilst I'm on my way, I would like to say sorry if I sound really down or really rushed today. I spent a good half of my day so far just on the phone with my internet provider. It was hellish. It went down this morning, and then it was an absolute battle to try to get it to work again, or to figure out what was going on. It turns out they were doing some unscheduled maintenance, and decided not to tell us, because that's reasonable. Ooh, one of their weapons are back online, but the Shriven is already in there. Stop, 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 stop. That's re- Did we already capture it? Okay, really high pitch from me, but we have got the enemy, so everything, turn back on, do some damage, kill some things. The flyer's down, or at least heavily damaged. How's everyone looking? The Shriven has taken a bit of damage on its turret. In fact, has lost its turret, the most part. Yep, it's completely lost the turret. The Angron's looking fine, and the two Krulls are also looking fine. The only enemy was that flyer. And battle finished. That was... A little bit weird, but yeah, I was really, really angry at them for not telling me about any of this because I thought there was something wrong on my end and I just wanted to fix it because, you know, uploading and working and stuff. And then when I tried to play Steam on offline mode, it didn't work, which meant I spent at least eight hours trying to get back into From the Depths. And then I spent five hours trying to make sure I understood how particle cannons work and changing some of the designs on the Krull and everything else, and I'm just in a really weird mood because of it. Okay, we- oh, 106,000 resource. That is beautiful. It would have been even more if you captured the thing over there. I know I need a capturing vehicle, and I will make that. All of you just turn off for a second so you can all just sit there repairing yourselves. Do I want to keep this? Can it still harvest resource? And is there any way I can take control of this to move it around? By the looks of it, yes I can. Can I move you in any way? No. Darn it. Okay, so a few problems then. We don't have engine power by the look. No, we do have a little bit of engine power, but we're losing fuel rapidly. What are you using fuel on? What would you be using fuel on right now? Not ammunition, because you've got no ammo storage. You have no material storage, so it can't be that. Oh, you're turning material into fuel! Yep, you are creating fuel right now. You have, yep, definitely creating fuel. So, resources, material storage, let's pot down some blocks. Of course, we have to, we have to delete blocks to place blocks, which is really annoying. Now let's see, are we harvesting? Yes we are! We are harvesting from this behemoth, which means we could keep it similar to the Land Marauder and keep it as a tortured relic, a slave of the Lathrixian Legion permanently here to harvest resource. I honestly thought this battle would be a little bit more, but it turns out the cultists from before had just really caused some internal damage. The missile turret was completely off, the turret over there was really damaged, the shells were very weak, and only the flyer was really still functioning. Well, it's harvesting resource, and it is creating fuel, so it's doing the job of the... Cathalon. Do I want to keep it? It is gorgeous. It is glorious. It's not online anymore, and fixing it would be a complete bugger. Though most of the turrets are still online, which means we could probably do a bit of repair work. Let's find out where the AI is. Or we could just make our own, so AI mainframe careful about where to place this. These are all beams, I think they're placed this way, so mainframe, then we need the transmitter, let's put it underneath just because I can. I said underneath, there we are. Boop. Does that mean its guns are online? I don't know, we need to see if they are all connecting to the right one. That is a huge turret. 
the question is, where did they put the local weapon control at? It, it's supposed to be here. Not connected to mainframe because the receiver's damaged as well. You are watching Lafrix does repairs to a behemoth. Controlling one weapon, so now this gun is online. This gun will function and will fight. And we can definitely turn on the other guns. It wouldn't be difficult. In fact, this one's already on as well. I'm not sure if the ammunition processes are working though, so I'm not sure if these will actually work. And we also have no ammunition. I wonder where the ammo is stored. There's so much damage, it's so hard to tell where everything was. Uh, engines are down here. Very inefficient engines by the looks of things. Some more material storage is here, but that, that's what I've already placed. Over here we have a physical connector with general processing units. Okay, let's put those back where they were. Although not all of them were that, they are that now. Because it's just easier. There we are. And then let's add ourselves some ammunition. Just put it over here. Oh, we should not put it over here. Look at this. Smoke dispensers, okay. So that's a fair bit of defense we really shouldn't mess up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just skip all of this. Okay, good, these are fixed. Well, these are still functioning by the looks of things, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and mess around trying to figure out where the ammunition storage was for this thing, and let's see if we can get this thing at least, at least functional enough to fight in combat. Around about half an hour later, tinkering with the insides and having a good old explore, and I've done quite a few things. First of all, I have added smoke effects and I have added lights, which means it now looks a little bit more like part of the Lafrixian Legion. I've also went ahead and added a flag, because you know, patriotism to the blood god and all of that. But also, I found the original AI completely fixed it, so it should now in theory be able to move. I hooked up that to the detection systems and fixed that because it turns out this vehicle had two separate mainframes, one for movement, one for the detection systems and the weapons, so I just combined them into one super mainframe, which seems to be doing the job, and I've also found out a lot of stuff from the inside and tried to fix as much as I could with the resources we had on hand. So for now, it should work, it should be combat worthy, I wouldn't recommend it, and this took far, far too long, but at least it looks pretty darn cool, and unlike the Land Marauder, I would trust this in combat just because of the huge cannons. I think we got really lucky with our first attack with the cultists, in that we destroyed the secondary mainframe, or we destroyed whatever was controlling the weapons, because it didn't really put up much of a fight in this battle, which I'm really happy with, since we ended up pretty much gaining resource. Now, the only problem I have had is it turns out this is not worth as much resource as I originally thought it was. If we look, it's actually worth 52,000 because this is the original material cost. So I'm definitely not scrapping it. We will be keeping this, I'll try to keep it out of combat, but it would probably do okay in a very close quarters combat, not very well in long range judging by the weapons. We've got a giant vehicle essentially resource harvester, and I'm completely happy with that, but by the looks of things, the enemy already want their land back. A new day dawns, which means we can actually see what we're doing, although we are instantly already under attack. But before we do that, I found out something interesting. In the same way as the Dustwind Gypsies, the Steel Empire only had two resource zones. This means upon claiming the first for our own, they are only now able to reinforce their tiles and send attacks against us at half of the original speed. We have really, really crippled the enemy. And so, let's sort out all of this. Angron, you can be over here. Shriven, I believe that's you. You can go over here because it's less bumpy. The cultist all the way up the front to be distracting, and then, as always, the crawls can be absolutely anywhere. It occurs to me I didn't even look at what the enemy actually consists of. So we have a Hexer, a Polaris, a Peregrine, a Polaris, and a Brush Cutter. Okay, I think this will be okay, although they do have two nukes, so it all depends on how fast we can attack those two Polaris. Let's go. We also have no materials, which means repairs are going to be really, really difficult here. Make sure we're not holding on to the weapon. We was. There we are. 
Our laser is already attacking the enemy, and they are firing at one of our crawls. I was hoping they'd focus on the cultist since it's closest, but apparently not. Okay, we just fired the portal cannon, and what did it do? It's hit this side, definitely hit that side, and yep, it's gone all the way through, apparently missing most of the important things, although it has caused it to tip over. I believe that was from the laser. Oh, one of the nukes, in fact, two of the nukes both going off over here. What happened there? No, the nuke is still there. What actually did happen here? For some reason, two nuclear explosions on the first Polaris. Our laser is currently firing at the second Polaris, so hopefully it won't be able to fire that nuke. Uh-oh, the nuke is in the air. And it is going straight for the Scriven. Oh, hitting the back of the Scriven, doing minimal damage. How much damage did that do? That could have gone so much worse. Uh, we've lost some of our flooring there by the looks of it, a chain reaction. We've lost a load of our repair bots and not all that much else. The fuel storage is fine and so is the AI. The laser will continue to fire. Even nuclear warfare will not stop us. A pretty one-sided battle, which has been the theme today, it seems. And there's the Krull's missiles heading in to finish this thing off. Oh, stop. Okay, jump over to the Scriven very quickly. Ah, we do have a chair still intact. There is no chance I'm getting that. Oh, well, just continue to hit it then. battle finished. Excellent. We got quite a bit of resource from that, but we also do need to do some repairs, especially on the Scriven and the Cultist. So pull all, and you can start repairing yourselves. Yes, we actually did gain some resource. Now, let's go back to this huge vehicle over here. Let's have a look at what it looks like in the day. So this is our harvester. Now, sadly, the spin block at the back did get destroyed. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I think it may have hit the side when it was trying to move. Those wheels aren't moving. Oh, because I'm not ordering you to move anywhere. Let's see if we can get this thing to try and move. Yes, it lives! And if it can't turn, because I'm not quite sure the controls this thing works with, we can always add turning wheels. Is that turning like it should do? Is it turning by mistake? I think that's just turning by mistake. Okay, so still a lot, a lot of work to do on this thing, but... At least it's here. Actually, by the looks of things, it is turning. Oh, all of these here are turning wheels. Okay, yeah, it can definitely turn. It's just not as powerful as it once was, so turning is very difficult. But hey, we have the basic systems all functional. We have a huge stolen vehicle, and we have a new resource zone. We've also tested out the particle cannons, and honestly, I found them to be not that great. I think what I'll need to do is go into the sandbox mode because, like I say, I didn't do this in the sandbox mode. I wanted to see if I could build it in the campaign, and I had little time today because of all the insanity of earlier life, you know, real life creeping into YouTube, and then just figure out the better way to do them. They do seem to be functioning, they are working, but I don't think they're going to perform adequately as a main tank, and that's the problem. They're not going to have the consistent results of the laser, and they can be very easily affected by smoke by the looks of things and are just overall very difficult to use. So with that I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. I do apologise if it seemed a little bit rushed or I seemed tired during this because honestly both of these are true. The next video I'll make sure to make a little bit more flashy so just thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed then of course likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel and most importantly shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continue in the future. In the next episode, we're going to try particle cannons again, but I think we're going to go with close range impact rather than long range slash medium range, very long cooldown shots. Also, look how many shields this thing has. That's insane. Thank you again, and goodbye. Time for me to get some sleep.